Jonathan Quillis could face the death penalty now that he's been convicted of the 2018 rape and murder of his 16-year-old niece. Ayanna Sawyer was a Terry Parker High School student. A jury took less than an hour to find him guilty on all counts on the sixth day of his trial. News for Jack's reporter Marilyn Parker is joining us live from the Duval County Courthouse. Marilyn, you observed a change in Quillis today when he was back in court for a status conference. Yes, but if you remember, the judge actually commended Quillis for his level of engagement during jury selection and in the guilty phase. Well, today was different. We saw his leg shaking under the table. He was sort of slouched in his chair and we saw him wiping his face several times. He was engaging with his defense attorney, but understandably so that his behavior would be different because now we're in the phase where the ultimate penalty is on the line. Mr. Quillis, can you raise your right hand? It's now life or death for Jonathan Quillis. He was sworn in Friday. He tells the judge who he wants called to speak on his behalf during the penalty phase starting Monday. Who from New York? This is one day after being convicted of impregnating and killing his 16-year-old niece, Ayanna Sawyer. They reviewed the aggravating factors jurors will consider in recommending life or death. Attorney Jean Nichols reminds us the jury only has to agree on one. What those factors are is there has to be proof that a crime was committed, a death penalty crime to become eligible for the death penalty, that the crime was committed in a certain way or for certain reasons. The state showed incriminating messages between Quillas and Sawyer. The police never found a body, blood, or a crime scene and testified how they made an arrest only after Quillis's confessions to his brother. Did the state really prove that a crime happened? There was a tremendous amount of circumstantial evidence that the state attorney's office was able to use to establish the stories that he had been telling about where he was and where he was not, was not factually correct. Knowing as well that we were able to establish a sexual relationship between the two of them, the judge made a determination that enough evidence was presented to allow the jurors to hear the admissions. Defense attorneys say they plan to call a doctor to the stand, likely speaking to Quillis's mental health. If the state attorney's office proves one of the aggravating factors, they would need a unanimous vote on that fact. And under new Florida state law, eight of the 12 jurors are needed to recommend death. That penalty phase begins Monday at 10 a.m. The judge said his goal would be to have both sides close either Monday afternoon or first thing Tuesday morning, giving the jury as much time as they need to cast their vote. Reporting live at the Duval County Courthouse, Maryland Parker Channel 4, The Local Station.